This is lesson 14 in our Calculus 3 series, Partial Derivatives. For y equals f of x, we remember that f prime of x naught gives us the slope of the graph of f at x equals x naught. But for z equals f of x y, what would the slope mean? On a surface, we have different slopes in different directions. So we're going to start by looking at the slope in the x direction and the slope in the y direction. And then later on, we're going to see that we can find the slopes in any other direction using those two. So let's take a look at this paraboloid. f of x, y is equal to negative x squared minus y squared plus 4. And let's consider the point 2 comma 1 comma negative 1. So we're here on this paraboloid. To consider the slope in the x direction, we want to treat y as a constant. And here, at this particular point, y is equal to 1. So what does that look like? So think about intersecting the plane y equals 1 with the surface. And talking about the slope in the x direction is talking about the slope of the curve of intersection of this plane and this surface. So now just consider the curve that we get along the intersection here. And we want to take the slope along that curve at this point. That's the slope in the x direction at this particular point. So how do we do that? How do we compute that? Well, we know that taking a slope is taking a derivative, and we said here that we're going to treat y as a constant because we're only looking in the x direction. So that's exactly how we're going to make that computation. We're going to treat y as a constant and take a derivative with respect to x. So here's our original function. We're looking for an x partial derivative, and I'll talk more about this notation in a minute. We're looking for an x partial derivative and we're going to compute that by treating y as a constant. So here's our original function. We know the 4 is a constant. We're going to treat the y as a constant while we take our x derivative. So our x partial derivative is going to be negative 2x. And so at the point 2, 1, negative 1, we're looking at the x partial derivative of f at this x and y value. That's negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. This is the slope in the x direction at that point. So let's go back up to our surface and see what that looks like. So we're saying this slope here is negative 4. Now let's take a look at the slope in the y direction. For the slope in the y direction, we we need to treat x as a constant and take the slope of the curve of intersection of the plane and the surface. So here at this point, x is equal to 2. So when we treat x as a constant, we're intersecting the plane x equal 2 with the surface. And we're looking for the slope along this curve now at this point. That's the slope in the y direction. So in order to take the y partial derivative, or the partial derivative in the y direction, we're going to treat x as a constant and take the derivative with respect to y. So again, here's our original function. Now taking the y partial derivative, we treat x as a constant. The 4 is a constant, and so our derivative is going to be just negative 2y. And so at this point, we have negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. So this is the slope in the y direction along the surface at that point. That slope is negative 2. So let's put that in here. Now let's take a look at the formal definitions of partial derivatives. So we're saying the x partial derivative of f is the limit as h goes to 0 f of x plus h comma y minus f of x y over h. Now let's think about this for a second. We said that we computed this x partial derivative by fixing y and looking at the rate of change with respect to x. That's exactly what this definition says. It says fix y 
and look at the rate of change with respect to x. Here you have the x plus h and the x. Looks like the definition of derivative that we have for the function of one variable. Similarly, for the y partial, we said we're going to treat x as a constant and look at the rate of change with respect to y. So here, x, x, x is fixed and we have a change in y. And so let's take a look at the notation for partial derivatives. For a function z equals f of xy, we've already seen this notation, f sub x of xy. We could also use this partial derivative notation. So remember in functions of one variable, we had df over dx. This is a partial d, so we would say partial of f with respect to x. Okay, of x, y, or partial of z with respect to x. And sometimes you'll see it noted with a differential operator, d sub x, applied to f. So it'll look like that. Similarly, for the y partial, we have f sub y, or partial f with respect to y, or partial z with respect to y, or dy of f. And for the notation of computing a partial derivative at a particular point, let's note that above we computed the x partial at 2 comma 1. We could also write that as partial f with respect to x of 2 comma 1 or at 2 comma 1. Often we see this bar notation, this is our evaluation bar, we're saying we're, we're evaluating the partial of f with respect to x at the point 2, 1. And we have the evaluation bar here as well, partial z with respect to x at 2, comma 1. So those are the different notations you might see regarding a partial derivative at a particular point. Now let's take a look at some examples. We'll do some practice. Find the partials of f with respect to x and y for f of x, y equals x squared y to the third minus 2e to the x, y. So to get the partial with respect to x, we said we have to treat y as a constant. So we're going here and taking our derivative, treating y as a constant. If y is a constant, then y to the third is just a constant multiple. It's like a 5. If you had 5x squared, your derivative would be 10x. We just carry that constant multiple to the derivative. So here, we're taking an x partial derivative. We're going to take a derivative here. We're going to get 2x, and this constant multiple just carries. So we have 2x y to the third. For this term, again, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So this is like e to the 3x up here. So what happens when you take the derivative of e to the 3x? You get a constant 3 that comes out and multiplies in front. So this constant of y is going to come out and multiply in front. So we have 2y e to the xy. I know it's confusing to think about the first time through, so let's write down those examples that I was just comparing to. Again, to take the x partial here, we're treating y to the third as a constant. So we're comparing this to taking the derivative with respect to x of 5x squared. We know that derivative is 5 times 2x. This constant multiple just carries to the derivative. Same thing's happening here. This constant multiple of y to the third just carries to the derivative. And we're taking the derivative of the function of x. We get 2x. Similarly, here, taking the derivative with respect to x, we have 2e to the xy. Compare that to 2e to the 3x. Because again, y is just a constant multiple. So let's pretend it's 3 for a second and see what that derivative looks like. We know that by the chain rule, a factor of 3 comes out when we take that derivative. So we have 2 times 3e to the 3x. Now our constant multiple here is a y. So it's the copy of y that gets multiplied by the chain rule when we take this derivative. So we have 2y e to the xy. And so combining these two, this is our x partial derivative here. And now let's look at our y partial derivative. Now we want to treat x as a constant. So with the first term, treating x as a constant, we take the derivative of the y term. We get 3x squared y squared. And here, taking the derivative with respect to y, treating x as a constant, we get negative 2x e to the xy. Because x is now the constant multiple, so that's what comes out when we use the chain rule and take our derivative. So our partial derivatives are here.
you're going to have to go slow in the beginning when you're computing your partial derivatives, but it will get faster. It'll get the hang of it. Now let's find the slope in the x direction along the surface, z equals cosine of x squared plus y squared, at the point 0 square root of pi. Now notice this is just the x and y coordinates given here, but we could have also been asked find the slope at the point 0 square root of pi negative 1 and give the x, y, and z coordinates along the surface. Because we have the function's definition here, we don't need to specify the z coordinate. We can just figure it out by putting in the 0 and the uh, radical pi for x and y. But we could also be given that z coordinate for convenience. In any case, we want to find the slope in the x direction. That is the partial derivative of z with respect to x at that point. So this is what we're asked to find, the partial of z with respect to x at the point 0 radical pi. So first we want to compute the partial of z with respect to x as a function, then we'll plug in our coordinates. Okay, we have z equals cosine of x squared plus y squared. So we're taking our derivative here, we're going to have to use the chain rule, taking the derivative of the outside and then the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of cosine we know is negative sine, so we're going to have negative sine of x squared plus y squared. Right, exactly what's in here, negative sine of x squared plus y squared. Now we need to multiply by the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. And since we're taking an x partial, it's an x partial derivative that we need to take in here. So that means we're going to treat y as a constant and take the derivative with respect to x. So we just get 2x plus 0, or 2x here. So our x partial derivative looks like negative 2x sine of x squared plus y squared. And now plugging in the point 0 comma radical pi, we get 0. Now let's take a look. What did they ask us to find again? They said find the slope in the x direction along the surface. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. Here's our surface, z equals cosine of x squared plus y squared. And this we saw in a previous lesson where we did contour plots. This was one of our matching problems. And we're talking about the point 0 square root of pi negative 1. So that's down here on our surface. And we're looking for an x derivative there, which means we're fixing, this is the plane, y equals square root of pi. We're fixing that y coordinate and we're taking the slope in the x direction. And so what we found is that this slope is equal to zero. Now let's take a look at another computation. We want to find the partial of z with respect to y at the point 2 comma negative 3 for z equals y ln x squared plus y squared. Now here we're asked for a y partial, and we notice that we have a product of functions that involve y. We've got a y outside of the ln x squared plus y squared. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So now take a close look at the notation that I'm using here, just to be clear about the derivatives that we're taking. We need to take the derivative of the first times the second plus first times derivative of the second. So I've got derivative of the first, I've got partial derivative with respect to y of that y, multiply by ln of x squared plus y squared, plus, copy down the first function, multiply by the partial derivative with respect to y of ln of x squared plus y squared. So I encourage you also to use this notation as you're going through product quotient chain rules. I think it's helpful. Derivative of y with respect to y is 1. We copy down this function, copy down the y, and now we're taking the derivative with respect to y here. Well, we've got ln of a function, so its derivative is going to be 1 over that function, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. And again, we're taking a y partial derivative here. So it's the y partial derivative of x squared plus y squared. And that is 2y, because remember, x is being treated as a constant here. So our y partial derivative looks like this, ln of x squared plus y squared plus 2y squared over x squared plus y squared. And plugging in the coordinates we were given, plugging in x equals 2, y equals negative 3, gives us ln of 13 
plus 18 over 13. I just want to point out here that if we were taking an x partial derivative, we wouldn't need to use the product rule. Because remember that the product rule is for when you have a product of functions with respect to that variable. If we were taking an x partial derivative here, this is just a constant multiple in front, like a 5. So we wouldn't have to use the product rule. The reason we had to use the product rule here is because it was a y partial derivative, and with respect to y, we have a product of functions. So I'll let you take the x partial derivative as an exercise. Now let's take a look at partial derivatives when we have functions of more than two variables. For example, we've seen functions like w equals f of x, y, z. And in that case, we could talk about partial derivatives with respect to each of the variables, x, y, and z. So we have partial w with respect to x, partial w with respect to y, partial w with respect to z. Also the notation could have an f in here instead of w, or we could use a subscript notation. Now how do we make these computations? To get the partial of w with respect to x, you're going to treat the other two variables as constants. If you had a function of 25 variables, you would treat the other 24 variables as constants. Whatever direction you're taking your derivative in, that is the only one that counts as a variable. The rest count as constants. Similarly, for partial w with respect to y, we treat x and z as constants. For partial w with respect to z, we treat x and y as constants. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have 2xy squared minus 3yz to the fifth plus 17x squared yz. Taking our f partial with respect to x, we want to treat y and z as constants. y and z are constants. So here we're just left with 2y squared. y and z are constants, so we get a 0 from here. And here, y and z are constants, so we get 34x, y, z. Those constant multiples just carry to the derivative term. For the y partial, x and z are going to be treated as constants. So looking at the first term, x is a constant multiple. We're taking the derivative. We get 4x, y. Again, x and z are constants, so this z to the fifth is a constant, and we just get 3z to the fifth. Here, x and z are constants, so we get 17x squared z. And taking the partial with respect to z, we're treating x and y as constants. So from this first term, we get 0 as our derivative. Here, y is a constant, so we get 15yz to the fourth. And here, x and y are constants. We get 17x squared y. Now let's take a look at a much more complicated example. f of xyz is equal to x squared times cosine of 2xy to the third z plus 2y. And we're going to find our x partial derivative. So for our x partial derivative, we're going to treat y and z as constants. So we notice that we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and we do have a factor of x squared out here, and an x inside this function, which means we've got a product of functions with respect to x, and we're going to be using the product rule. So again, I've got derivative of the first times the second, plus first times derivative of the second. And when I say derivative, I'm referring to the x partial derivative, because that is the derivative that we're taking here. So I'm going to use my notation like that to remind me where I need to take my derivatives. Derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x. And now here, derivative with respect to x of cosine of 2xy to the third z plus 2y looks like negative sine of all of that multiply by the x partial of that inside function. And now let's take a look at the x partial of this inside function. We're treating y and z as constants, and so we get just 2y to the third z. And so we're here. So simplifying, it looks like this. And that's our x partial derivative here. And for practice, I encourage you to take the y and z partial derivatives as well.
Now let's take a look at implicit differentiation with partial derivatives. When our equation isn't explicitly solved for z, we use implicit differentiation to find the partial derivatives of z with respect to x and with respect to y. So let's take a look at this example. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 49. We know that's the sphere of radius 7 centered at the origin. And let's compute our partial derivatives at the point 3, negative 2, 6 on the sphere. So just like we did back in Calc 1 for functions of one variable, we're going to take the derivative of both sides of the equation. And when I say the derivative, I'm now talking about the x partial derivative here, because that's what we're working on first. So we're going to take the x partial derivative of both sides. So here, that's going to be 2x plus 0 plus 2z partial z with respect to x. Now remember here, z is not constant. z depends on x and y. So we use the chain rule here, and we get 2z partial z with respect to x. And on the right-hand side, we have the partial derivative with respect to x of a constant, and so that's 0. And so solving for partial z with respect to x, we get negative x over z. And so at the point 3, negative 2, 6, that's going to be negative 3 over 6, or negative 1 half. Now let's take a look at the partial derivative with respect to y at that point. Same idea, x is a constant, z is not a constant, z depends on x and y. So our partial derivative here looks like 0 plus 2y plus 2z partial z with respect to y. And on the right hand side again we get 0. So solving for partial z with respect to y we get negative y over z and that is one-third when we plug in our coordinates. Now we're going to take a look at this graphically in just a second, but I just want to point out how to know when z is treated as a constant or when you need to use the chain rule and get partial z with respect to x. So in these problems above, we had functions of x, y, and z. We were given f of x, y, z is equal to all of this. f of x, y, z is equal to all of this. Here, what we have is all of this is equal to 49. So we're not talking about a function of x, y, and z. We're talking about a relationship between these three variables that's just not solved for z. Also, another thing to look out for is when they're telling you find partial z with respect to x. Then you know z is changing with respect to x. z is not independent of x. So z can't be treated as a constant when you're taking your x partial. Well, let's go back here to our partial derivatives. We found that the slope in the x direction on this sphere at this point is negative one-half. The slope in the y direction at the same point is one-third. The slope in the x direction, this is the plane y equals negative two. The slope in the x direction is negative one-half. And the slope in the y direction, this is the plane x equals three. The slope in the y direction is equal to one-third. Now let's take a look at higher order partial derivatives. Just like we could talk about taking a second and a third derivative when we had a function of one variable, we have that same idea with partial derivatives. So if we're starting with the x partial derivative of a function, we could again take its x partial derivative. And that's fxx, our second partial in the x direction. We could also start with the x partial and then take its y partial derivative. That gives us fxy, a mixed partial, we call that. We could start with fy and take its x partial. That gives us fyx, another mixed partial. Or we could start with the y partial and take its y partial derivative, and that gives us fyy. So let's take a look at an example. We have f of xy is equal to 2xy squared minus 5x to the third y plus 17x. 
To get our second partials, we have to first take our first partials. So we start with f sub x, our x partial derivative. Again, taking an x partial means the y is treated as a constant. So we have 2y squared minus 15x squared y plus 17 for our x partial. And then from that, we can take an x partial and get fxx. So taking an x partial here, we're just going to get negative 30xy. To get fxy, we're going to go back to fx, and from here, take a y partial. So that's going to be 4y minus 15x squared. Let's take a look at our y partial. Fy, we're going here to the original and treating x as a constant. So Fy is going to be 4xy minus 5x to the third. And from there, we can take another y partial. That's going to give us 4x. Or from Fy, we could take an x partial, and that'll give us Fyx. Taking an x partial here, we treat y as a constant, and we get 4y minus 15x squared. And notice, our mixed partials, fxy and fyx, are equal. We'll talk more about that in another minute. Let's take a look at another example. And this one's a bit more complicated, but worth going through to get you back into the habit of taking derivatives. So we've got f of xy is equal to arc sine of 2xy squared. Taking an x partial, we need the derivative of arc sine. So that's 1 over radical 1 minus this inside function squared. But we have to use the chain rule and take the derivative of that inside function. Since we're taking an x partial derivative, we need an x partial derivative here. And so that's going to give us 2y squared. And we can just square out here. And so we're here. And we can leave it like this, but it might be helpful to write it as 2y squared times 1 minus 4x squared y to the fourth to the negative 1 half. Because we're going to see that when we go to take our second x partial, y is just a constant multiple. And it's easier to write the function this way to take the derivative. Now notice, again, we're taking an x derivative, so y is treated as a constant. We don't need to use a product rule, because with an x derivative, we only have one part of the function here that has x in it. So 2y squared is treated as a constant multiple, and we're taking the derivative here. So using the chain rule, the negative 1 half comes down, and we get that to the negative 3 halves power, and then we need the x partial derivative of what's inside. So that x partial derivative is going to be negative 8xy to the fourth. So that's here. And simplifying, we're here. And that's our xx partial. We could take our xy mixed partial. So again, we're starting with our x partial. And this time I'm leaving it in quotient form because I recognize that we're taking a y derivative and I have a y up here and a y down here. So this is in fact a quotient of functions with respect to y. And so let's review the quotient rule here. Bottom times derivative of the top minus top times derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. And again, when I talk about derivative, I'm talking about a y partial derivative because that's where we're at now. So our y partial derivative here is 4y. Here we have to use the chain rule. We have 1 half of this to the negative 1 half multiplied by the y partial of what's inside. And so far we're here. We can't leave a negative exponent in the numerator of a fraction. So in order to simplify, we want to multiply top and bottom by 1 minus 4x squared y to the fourth to the positive 1 half. So to simplify here, I'm multiplying top and bottom by this same factor. 
radical 1 minus 4x squared y to the fourth. That's going to get rid of this negative exponent. It's also going to get rid of the radical that we have here. Right, it gets rid of this negative exponent, it gets rid of the radical here, and now we have the denominator to the 3 halves power. And so simplifying, that leaves us here. And that's our mixed partial fxy. Now again, from the original function, we could find our first y partial. So we're back here to the arcsine function. And now we want the partial derivative with respect to y. So we're here. And then we can take another y derivative using the quotient rule. In my notation, I've gone a little bit faster. I didn't show all the partial derivative notation here. But take a minute and follow through the computation, please. And for our mixed partial fyx, we're starting again with fy here and taking an x partial. Again, we need the quotient rule because we do have a function of x over a function of x. And again, this is equal to fxy. And that brings us to Clairaut's theorem. Suppose f is defined on a disk D that contains the point AB. If the functions fxy and fyx are both continuous on D, then the mixed partials are equal at the point AB. So we can't say that the mixed partials are equal for every function, but they're going to be equal for all the functions that we usually deal with. The special cases for where this doesn't hold, for where the mixed partials are not equal, are usually written in the form of piecewise functions, and most textbooks will have an example of where this doesn't hold. And we'll conclude our lesson on partial derivatives here.